Hello and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be eating and reviewing Yomi. This is the first and only epic devil fruit in the game right now, so I really don't know what to expect. I just hope that it actually deserves to be above the rares. Just so you know what I'm working with, I'm putting 468 points into devil fruit. So Chilling Soul is a freeze ability, and the freeze time is very generous. I think it's about 5 seconds, or in any case long enough to use your ult. This skill is pretty overpowered in PvP, because it's unblockable and it works as a combo extender. If you're a pro PvP player and you know insane combos, you'll be a menace in ranked with this move. The soul form is also a freeze ability, but it has a lot of downsides. The freeze is extremely quick, barely lasting a second, so by the time you return to your physical form it's basically over, and unless you're extremely quick, you won't be able to get the hits in you were hoping for. Just not as good as the first one. You just gotta make sure you don't fly too far, because the freeze is so short you won't have time to combo. Just keep in mind this skill is completely useless at long range, because you have to aim it like a flight, which means the hitbox is pretty small and precise, so it's really easy for them to dodge. And if your physical body gets hit, the move is cancelled. T is the travel skill as usual. At first glance it just looks like a goofy run, but if you walk off a cliff or something, you actually keep going. The speed in the air isn't incredible, but it's cool. The coolest thing about this skill though, is that you can hold weapons out while using it. Which means you can catch people off guard by just diving into an M1 combo after using Skedaddle. You can make yourself very unpredictable if you use Skedaddle at the right moment. And for that reason Skedaddle is one of the best travel moves in PvP. Soul Assault is a sweet little kick combo that guard breaks. And thanks to the guard break stun, it gives you an opportunity to do combos. It's pretty brain dead to be honest. And if you manage to freeze your opponent with R or E afterwards, you can do combos that last just about forever. Now Death Defied is a very interesting ability. When you think you're about to die, press X. And if your opponent defeats you, you'll get revived with 33% of your full HP and you'll have all your stamina back. This is essentially a clutch. Now, I know getting revived, even though you were defeated, sounds overpowered as hell, but here's what I have to say about that. This ability is only good if you both have low HP. If it's a really tight fight, and you both have similar HP, you know, you're both really low, and then you just regain 33% of all of your HP and get all your stamina back, then clearly you have the advantage. But if you've been struggling against someone for the whole match, and then you use Death Defied, thinking it will help you win, chances are they'll take away the HP you just gained just as easily and you'll lose anyway. So my point is, if someone's been whooping your <coughs> for 5 minutes straight, don't use this skill because you're just delaying the inevitable. The Soul King Roar makes you spawn a giant soul demon. Obviously it's a guard breaker, and with my stats I'm doing around 400 damage, and it only costs 125 stamina which is pretty low for an ult. The only thing with this ult is it stays in one place, so if you don't stun, they can just run or get her away. Which is why you should always use the E move before using the ult. The R move doesn't freeze long enough, but the E move stuns for just the right amount of time so that the ult can fully hit. And yeah, other than that really small issue, this is a really solid ultimate. Farming with Yomi can be quite slow if you're just going to use E and Z, because Z doesn't one shot and it flings the NPC away too. So what I do is I aggro as many as I can with the E move, and then I one shot with the ultimate. But if you want to do it this way, you have to wait for the cooldown of the ultimate every time. If you don't use the ult and you're just going to use E and Z, like I said, it's still pretty slow. For ship farming, it's not very good. As you just saw, I used the E move from on top of my ship, and none of the NPC got affected. And I wasn't that high up to be honest. The ultimate never disappoints, but all the other moves are pretty much useless. Let's see if I can do anything good with R, nope. Let me try E again, nah, nothing. 
Z kind of works when you're at a weird angle. Unless you're just gonna stand there and wait for the ultimate, the only other effective way to ship farm with Yomi is to actually stand on the ships themselves. Which isn't ideal because if something goes wrong you'll drown. Now, Yomi and Dungeons, I've gotta say, really surprised me. I was at wave 20 with a Mera user friend, and two Pika bosses spawned, and they both obliterated him with Pika ult. So he's dead, right? So now it's just me. So what do you think's gonna happen? Keep in mind I'd only had Yomi for about an hour at this point. I had no idea what to do, both Pika bosses were full HP, and my friend was about to get gripped. Go between them, Yomi ult. And bam, half their HP is gone. You see that? I won't lie, I didn't defeat them alone. But the fact that Yomi allowed me to hold off two Pika bosses at once, and that my ult alone did that much damage, is pretty impressive. Later on, I tried a solo dungeon. And again, I was pleasantly surprised. Usually, I just freeze them all with E, and then kill them all with Z. But I just got interrupted. Don't worry about it though, watch what I do. Zed can't be interrupted, and I can't be damaged while using it either. With almost any other fruit, with that amount of Kiribachi users and 1SS users, that would have been certain death. Overall, I'm quite happy with how this fruit turned out. It's definitely a combo fruit, and if you're a sword user, I really recommend you try it out. I don't think Yomi is the best fruit in the world or anything, I don't think it's perfect, but I definitely think it's better than poor. Compared to poor, I had a much easier time PvPing and doing dungeons. But at the same time, I can't rate it much higher than poor because I feel like it does deserve its epic rating. It feels better than all the rares, but it doesn't quite feel like on the same level as most of the legendary fruits. So I'm going to put it slightly above poor at let's say 7.5. And I know I'll probably get some comments saying, What? You placed an epic above a legendary? Bro, I don't care. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's just my opinion. Let me know if you agree or if you disagree in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.